Curious about how engineers construct bridge piers and power plant foundations? Ever wondered how underwater restaurants are made? Hello everyone! In today's video, we'll show you how to build and repair structures in water, and it's sure to amaze you. However, it's not that simple. Even building a small underwater restaurant with 30 seats is challenging. The restaurant's hall was built on land, taking 10 months with safety checks on all key parts. This steel structure has a transparent acrylic dome weighing 410 tons, requiring a crane ship to place it in the water. The ship the 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 is the ferry, to a small with cranes, island with in the Maldives, where silent operations began. Divers were already waiting underwater to position the building next to a small reef 5.8 meters deep. The building was secured on piles driven into the seabed, which is why the restaurant at the Hurawalhi Island Resort is named 5.8. To reach this restaurant, you must cross the pier and descend a spiral staircase. Food is delivered. From the land-based kitchen to the underwater restaurant via a dedicated elevator. Of course, good ventilation is essential when using such special construction techniques. Larger Structures like power plants and oil platform supports can also be built by submerging them. For example, Germany built the Wehrmacht wind farm in the North Sea with a total capacity of 402 megawatts, installing 67 wind turbines of 600 kilowatts each. This construction project used three large ships. First, the rock pipe ship laid stones on the seabed at the piling site to prevent the power plant's foundation from being eroded by currents. Then the other two ships began their work. Sea Jack Skyliner is the world's largest self-elevating vessel, equipped with a 150-ton crane, capable of transporting three monopiles at a time. These are the largest monopiles in the world, weighing 130 tons, 85 meters long, and... 7.8 meters in diameter. To drive this pile into the seabed, a special vessel with legs was used. This ship, with 105-meter-long legs, is fixed to the seabed to ensure stability even at a depth of 65 meters. Initially, it took 24 hours to drive a single pile, but as workers gained experience, they could drive two piles a day. Working alongside Sea Jack Skyliner is Sea Jack Zolotron, which transported six transition pieces, each weighing 350 tons. Sea Jack Zolotron is equipped with an 80 ton crane and also uses self elevating technology. Its 85 meter long legs rest on the seabed, slightly raising the ship above the water, maintaining stability even in waves. Thus, the crane on Sea Jack's Zolotron can place the transition pieces on the piles with incredible precision and the turbine towers are installed on top of the transition pieces. Was completed between 2015 and 2017. It's truly impressive. Before constructing various buildings on land, extensive preparation work is required, such as leveling the construction site, digging foundations, or piling. Before setting up structures on the seabed, proper site preparation is crucial. The simplest option is to send an excavator into the sea to level the seabed for subsequent sea. 
installation of supports and other structures. Check out this uniquely shaped Cat 374 DL excavator, nicknamed Moby Dig, entering the ocean to clear the construction site for the UK's Rampian Wind Farm. This excavator is equipped with sonar to scan the seabed and a support vessel for workers, which proved useful and wasn't wasted. Why do I say that? Because the plan didn't always go smoothly. Just hours before the contract work was about to be completed, the excavator got stuck and sank in a soft spot on the seabed. From this incident, the excavator can't level the seabed smoothly. Underwater rock blasting is... necessary. The theory behind this big explosion is simple. Drill a hole in the rock, plant explosives, and you'll hear a loud bang, so leave the area. Blasting is done to deepen the seabed for ship navigation or as preparation before building docks, breakwaters, or other flood control structures. To prevent structures from moving underwater, they must be securely fixed. In most cases, bolts, anchors, and other tools are used. However, sometimes metal parts need welding and repairs require cutting. These operations are usually done wet, meaning welding and cutting are completed directly underwater. If this work is done at great depths and under high pressure, it's called high pressure work. However, it's a very dangerous task, with divers facing high risks of electric shock and pressure. To avoid these risks, a dry-wet method is used, submerging a special room to repair pipelines. First, piles are driven into the seabed and the entire structure is securely fixed. Then, pressurized mixed gas is pumped into the room connected to the piles and pipelines, and water is removed from the, uh, room. This way, the welding machine can enter the room without issues. Apart from the high pressure, the rest of the work process is almost the same as on land. If the right construction methods are used, concrete is just as useful underwater. This process isn't much different from normal situations. First, assemble the formwork for pouring concrete. Then install the rebar frame inside the formwork. Next, pour concrete through pipes from a concrete pump that make it water to say and prevent corrosion contains ingredients. Of course, an experienced diver is needed to complete all the work, able to operate underwater as on land, but using different methods. We also want to introduce another method of underwater concrete pouring known as the Tremi method. When pouring concrete, this method prevents dissolution. Concrete is poured into the formwork through special pipes. But first, a special plug called a pig is used to seal the pipe. When the first batch of concrete enters, the plug is pushed out and floats to the top. The most important point is that when pouring concrete, the end of the pipe is always submerged in the concrete, and the concrete placed in the formwork must not contact or mix with water. Construction in rivers or lake beds, a wall called a coffer dam can be built to separate water from the work area. To prevent water leakage, metal sheet piles called steel sheet piles are driven into the seabed as walls. Welding or special watertight joints are usually used to connect the sheet piles. Sometimes, for safety, two coffer dam structures are built, one inside the other, and the gap is filled with soil or concrete. For example, when building docks, coffer dams can also be connected to the shore. Additionally, when building bridge piers, coffer dams are set up in the center of rivers or lakes. After preparation, water is pumped out from inside the structure, and workers with machinery enter to pour concrete and carry out construction work. Although this work seems safe, it still has risks. When you drive across a bridge over a river or see the... 
turbines of a power plant across the ocean. Remember these things. That's it for today's video. Thank you very much for watching.